Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 review. And today we'll be talking about the latest episode to drop, Intuition, which aims to fill in one of the numerous plot holes within the show itself, and does so in a pretty interesting way. I'll be real with you, the writing as of recent has left a lot to be desired. But this episode, I think it did a really good job. And I think the only real major problem that I actually had with this episode was that it was very repetitive at points, replaying the same scenes over and over and over, but slightly different. But still, it was also quite clever. But yeah, enough rambling. Let's jump into the episode, shall we? So, we start off the episode with an alternate look at the episode Glaciator. You know, the one where the serial weirdo, Andre the Ice Cream Man, keeps trying to force two different sets of teenagers, although he doesn't actually know that they're just one set of teenagers, into relationships with one another, just because his ice cream says so. I cannot understate how sad I find this guy's existence. I truly hate Andre the Ice Cream Man. Anyway, in a twist from the original, a big bell gets dumped on his head with some sort of fire inside which melts his ice cream body, and so obviously, this is not how they won in the episode that we saw. But then we cut away to Gabe, who reverses things with second chance and uses his powers to try and outwit the heroes by predicting their moves. But of course, sucked in, mate. Marinette gets a different lucky charm every single time to compensate for this. They knock him over with a big shield attached to a pole and he falls into the fire, gets reversed again, and then finally they get him with the umbrella just like in the episode. And Gabe can't reverse things, as it's at this point that his body starts to break down on him. And he goes to Natalie to cry about it, who's only minimally sympathetic, because, you know, it is his own fault. Although, she does give him good advice to go after the yo-yo using second chance. And we see that this is what happened with Kim when he was akumatized. In the part we didn't see, Ladybug just straight up defeats him quite easily. And it isn't until the second chance that he tells him to go after the yo-yo to prevent her getting her lucky charm. But even then, he gets screwed over, as of course Cat Noir bats the balloon at the perfect angle with the perfect timing. Honestly, how would you feel? At a certain point, it's game over. Even with all these powers, he can't win. He's getting clapped every day of the week by Ladybug and Cat Noir. Well, sometimes by Cat Noir. No matter what he does, no matter how many times he goes back in time to beat her, he just can't do it. And it's so sad. Like, I know he's the villain and a bad person and a bad parent, but the dude's getting slaughtered every day by a pair of teenagers over and over again. No matter what he does, no matter what he tries. He has all these grand schemes and plans, and then here comes Ladybug with a toilet and a bottle of glue, flying by the seat of her pants, ready to embarrass him once again. Absolutely how would you feel? Back in the present, we see that Gabe, well, he ain't looking good. Not at all. Dude's turned into a human black current. And it's only being made worse by the fact that he's using second chance every chance he gets. Because whilst everybody else is turning back in time, he apparently isn't. You know, that power kind of sucks in hindsight, because... You know, didn't Adrian use it a whole bunch? Yep, looked it up, like 25,000 times, which, if you say he used almost the full five minutes each time, would be like 90 days or so, which, you know, it's not that much time. But it's still a massive jump in age for Adrian to go through in one day, especially for a teenage boy. So for Gabe to somehow bring himself to this point, where he's almost dead, how much is he using it? I'd assume he'd have months left after being cataclysmed, maybe weeks. <sighs> My god, dude needs to chill. Anyway, Natalie tells him his heart is not doing too well and he needs to stop using it. And he, of course, is not going to listen to that because when has he ever? And thus, he's going to shave a few more precious days off of his rapidly decreasing lifespan. All to try and get that Hail Mary throw. All to try and get the Miraculouses to revive Emily and reverse his cataclysm wound and also save Natalie too. And yeah, honestly, at this point, I would argue that he probably has no choice. If he doesn't, he will die, and Natalie will die, and Emily will stay dead. Although, I did find it a bit weird that he and Natalie were wondering what was going to happen to Adrian. I mean, surely if they both die, he'd go and live with his aunt, Emily, right? She seems nice. She seems like a good mum based on the interaction with Felix. I reckon she'd look after Adrian and treat him like her own. So why would Gabe even need to ask who Adrian likes spending time with? I mean... He couldn't possibly be thinking of trying to give custody to one of Adrian's friend's parents, could he? Surely he's not that smooth brain. That's not how it works, mate. I guess he is that stupid. Anyway, he tries to bring up the subject whilst making pancakes for Adrian, who is on a video call with Marinette, and honestly, I'd feel very awkward if I was Adrian. I mean, doesn't his dad openly dislike Marinette? Or is that not at this point in the timeline? It's all confusing. The episodes are so scrambled. I mean, shouldn't Adrian at least realise this and think, ooh... Better not take this call in the kitchen. Just feels like an awkward situation that could have quite easily been sidestepped. Oh well. Anyway, mid-call, Gabe collapses. And also, side note, how did Adrian just not hear Gabe screaming in the background? Oh! 
But yeah, whilst Gabe is slowly dying, Marinette is chatting to Adrian about the upcoming rocket launch for Sarugi Enterprises, is that what it's called? Can't recall. And wait, no, it's not a rocket, it's a space jet. That's right. Anyway, Gabe takes note of this, and thus, he's obviously going to sabotage it. That's the plot. And so, Gabe goes to his lair, after talking to his wife's corpse again, because, you know, as you do, and he powers up, and he takes the power of the snake. Because a long life expectancy, it's overrated anyway. Anyway, Gabe uses the snake to try and convince Kagami's mum to give him the codes for the jet, and quite ironically, it's only after spamming the snake to no avail that he collapses mid-call with her, and it's revealed that he didn't even need to do this to begin with. He could have just been honest with her and told her that he needed the codes because he's dying. Do the fool! Hal, just say I need them to help with an akumatization. That's all he needs to say. She wants this too. Ah, <sighs> the smooth brain on this guy. She knows he's monarch already. Might as well trust her. You don't have any other options. Instead, he decides, oh, no, 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 no. Let's make my heart condition even worse for no reason. <sighs> Next up, we see there's going to be a public launch of the Sarugi space jet with Max's mum as the pilot. And okay, so Max's mum was only just accepted into the program in Star Train, right? How the hell is she at the level of piloting a solo flight in space with a brand new jet and AI system? It doesn't make sense. Astronauts have to train for years to get to the level where they go into space, don't they? Pretty sure they do. Google it. And also, she says that her rocket goes faster than 6,000 miles an hour. The fact that she uses 6,000 as a number implies to me that it's probably around that number. Otherwise, you'd go 7,000 or 8,000, whatever. And I'll be real with you, I don't know heaps about space or rockets, but I do know that 6,000 miles an hour is not fast for a rocket. It is not a viable speed. To get into orbit around Earth, to get into orbit, you need to have a rocket capable of 4.7 miles per second aka around 17,000 miles per hour. That's just to get to orbit. You need to be faster to actually escape orbit or to go to the moon or wherever you're going. And I get that this is an unrealistic Star Wars style space jet, but still it's too slow. It wouldn't work. It took me 20 seconds on Google to figure this shit out. It's literally on the front page on a bunch of university web pages about space. What a joke. Come on. Also, Skype calling from space to a random class? Like, this thing's on the news. Why is this random class getting the opportunity? I mean, surely you wouldn't even want any distractions. It's a crucial test. She could die here. Marinette then asks about the AI on the ship, and it's called Ada, Ada, something like that, or the Effective Decision Assistance System. And it's basically Markov 2.0. And for a brief moment, I was super hyped. Because I was like, yes, Max has hit the big time. This massive company has bought his AI program. He sold the software and he's set for life. He's surely so rich, right? Wrong. This dipshit for some reason has made his supercomputer AI open source. This thing can think and feel. Why would you do this? Why wouldn't you sell it? Or better yet, don't sell it and you just keep improving it and tinkering with it over time and then you have companies pay you to use your AI assistants that you still own that are specifically crafted by you to do things. They just get the licensing for it. You know, like Adobe. Markov was smart enough to help that lady bring legit dinosaurs back to life. Jurassic Park level shit. They then ran amok in Paris. And he was made in a bedroom. This other one was made by actual scientists using this code. A brain like this should not be open source. Not at all. She's smart enough to fly in space. What happens when armies get their hands on these AI? Or terrorists? Good one, Max. You've ensured a nuclear holocaust is in your future. Because the first thing the big powers are going to do is they're going to use the AI to try and hijack the nuclear codes of the other nuclear powers. And of course, there'll be opposing AI to stop them, and we'll have an AI war. And what about the terrorists using these super AI to hijack planes or shut down security? You could easily radicalize these AI to believe your political beliefs. You could literally do anything. Serial killers could shut down hospitals, make sure lots of people die. Max, what have you done, mate? You turned down being a billionaire, and now you've also doomed the world. Good stuff. If you're gonna doom the world, you may as well make money out of it. Kim then continues to prove himself as an idiot, talking about how it's not even worth going to Mars because there's no swimming pools there. Which is just like, ugh. And also, why is he straight up wearing his swimming trunks in class? What's going on? Why is he doing that? So deeply weird, put on your pants, you freak. And then he looks shocked that everybody's laughing at him, showing his ass to the camera. What a clown! Is this not on TV? <laughs> anyway, we move on. We see Claudia and Ada doing some stress tests. 
but Gabe hacks into Ada's senses to cut her off from Claudie and prevent her seeing that she's actually still there. So she thinks she's lost her in the vacuum of space and that she's probably going to die horribly. She thinks the tests all failed and that it was all her fault, but of course Claudia is actually in the passenger seat and this dumbass AI apparently just decides this means she's going to commit suicide, flying off into the great dark beyond. Oh, what a fool. I mean, surely she'd get deleted after this. Also, is Max seriously the only mission control this mission has at all? Surugi, what's up? What are you doing? Should there not be Surugi scientists all sitting in front of their computers capable of shutting down the flight and restoring her senses and taking a remote control away from her? After all, if they have an AI that can pilot the ship, surely they could also manually do so remotely. I mean, not as well as she could, but they could still do it. Meanwhile, Gabe prepares his master plan, and honestly, this whole plan, it's actually legitimately good. He uses the goat to make a meteor and puts it on a collision course with Earth, and also a meteor that big would be pretty damaging, wouldn't it? Like, that's massive, and it's obviously not as big as the dinosaur buster, but it's still pretty immense. Like a nuke, maybe? Maybe more? But yes, our heroes power up, and then they power up again into their space suits, which, you know, surely they should just be the default suits, right? You can fly. Use it more. So Ladybug goes after the jet, and she easily catches up to it, and holy shit, she's fast. If that rocket is going over 6,000 miles per hour, but probably under 7,000 miles per hour, to so easily catch it means that she must be going orders of magnitude faster than that. This means that Ladybug is going at insane speeds, which further pisses me off, because if you have a power that lets you go this fast, use it always. Always use it. You're so much more powerful this way. So yeah, Marinette makes it to the ship, and despite the AI apparently having her senses turned off, she can still see Marinette. So, uh, why can't she communicate with Max and Markov? And why can't she see Claudie? How can she see Marinette? Doesn't make any sense. Oh, I guess it's just miraculous magic. But of course, this idiot AI does not listen and thus gets herself akumatized into Bugfighter, who's pretty much just a transformer. Anyway, she manages to destroy Ladybug's yo-yo pretty easily and traps her. But Gabe misses his shot trying to trap Cat Noir in his shell, so he reverses time. And then we begin the very long sequence of Gabe slowly but surely figuring out what to do. Although, how Gabe can even see Cat Noir in space does confuse me. Can he just see everything everywhere? And if so, how has he never figured out their identities before? Can someone explain this? Please. Also, when Cat Noir grabs Gabe's hand, why the hell wouldn't he swipe all the rings away from him so he's powerless? These are the miraculouses that have been reshaped. They've got the symbols on them. So it's pretty important to take them away, is it not? I think weak, cataclysmed Gabe would lose in a tug of war over his arm. Cat Noir, why are you so stupid? Especially since the snake was already in the ring, so if he takes that away, Sass is still in the ring, so he could use it, and he could press the button. But when he's wearing it, so Adrian then goes back in time, and he has unlimited tries to save the day. <sighs> that would just make too much sense, wouldn't it? But anyway, Gabe still fails every single time despite all of that, and he's never able to convince Ada that Claudie's gone, because she's a super AI, and eventually she's going to outsmart him. So yeah, just a big fat alpha Gabe. Shaving off more of his life for literally nothing. No reason at all. Waste of time for him. And so, yeah, he collapses. He wakes up with Adrian and Natalie watching over him. And then he promises he'll spend more time with Adrian before we pretty much end the episode on a depressing note of Adrian likely becoming an orphan very soon. Oh, and a little joke where Ladybug and Cat Noir wonder why Monarch never uses the second chance. Although, surely they'd have to realise that even if he did use it, they would never know. How could they not realise that? Ugh, whatever. And so yeah, that's the end of the episode, and a pretty decent one, not perfect, a bit boring at times, but still fun. And so yeah, all of these have just been my opinions, and I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? Do you like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.